is a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, I, I love hosting uh, our delegation. We have such a strong delegation, and I'm, I'm very proud that they are here today. You know, we talked about the importance of growing our city, and I know that I can't do it alone. I depend on uh, my federal partners to help make Baltimore better, safer, and stronger. And the delegation came to City Hall today uh, with me, with my um, administration uh, leadership, to discuss how the federal government can help Baltimore grow and, and prosper. I want to personally thank uh, Senator Mikulski, uh, one, for pushing to make sure that this, this happened, uh, and for her commitments uh, to help uh, us grow Baltimore. Uh, I know that Senator Cardin couldn't be here. He did send staff, and I want to thank uh, Congressman uh, Cummings as well as Congressman Sarbanes for not just coming, uh, but for, for being present and, and part of the dialogue on how we can work together uh, to be in sync on the priorities of the city and how the delegation can align their efforts uh, to make sure that we're meeting our goals. We talked about a growing economy, supporting the pillars of growth, investing in workforce development, as well as funding infrastructure improvements throughout the city. We talked about investing in our schools, as well as improving uh, public safety, uh, funding for police training, uh, grants to protect the victims of domestic violence, as well as combating uh, illegal guns uh, along the um, I-95 corridor. We talk, also talked about strengthening our neighbors, our neighborhoods. Excuse me. We've, uh, we're looking for resources to uh, federal resources to help improve our efforts around vacants to value, as well as uh, improving our uh, water and transportation infrastructure. You know, we want to to build on our recent success, and we'll be able to meet our goal of growing Baltimore uh, by 10,000 families in 10 years. And again, I really appreciate all the the, the hard work. Um, I know that we try to we try to cover a lot of topics, but I think we got through it, and we also um, have a framework for um, more work uh, together. So I want to invite the senator up uh, to speak, and if there are any comments from uh, Senator, I mean from uh, Congressman uh, Cummings and Congressman Sarbane, Senator. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's morning. great for me to be back here at City Hall, where I was a member of the Baltimore. Uh, city Council for five years, and um, during that time, Mayor, uh, they nicknamed uh, we in the City Council the Pothole Parliament. Uh, so that's why it's absolutely relevant that today as we gather as your delegation, we are your Team Baltimore in the United States Congress in this uh, difficult, frugal environment, how we can fight for smart funding, the right policies to help make sure that we grow Baltimore, that we grow our economy, that we improve our schools, and that we have safer streets, and make sure that um, if you want to come with where it's happening, you want to come here to Baltimore. We want to thank you for your leadership, and I know my colleagues will be talking about different aspects of what we've talked about. But the aspect that I'm going to talk about is continuing to work with you on creating jobs in Baltimore. And it's one of the areas we agreed we must fight for an infrastructure bank. That infrastructure is the key to Baltimore's future. We need to keep the port dredged so that we can bring the ships in to our wonderful outer harbor. We need to have infrastructure to make sure we're fixing the Howard Street Tunnel for high-speed rail and that we have infrastructure for light rail, uh, the red line, and others, and also fix up the Baltimore aging water system. But the other thing that we want to make sure is that everybody who lives, works, worships, and shops in Baltimore, that we have safe streets and safe communities. We talked today about how we keep our, safe, our streets safe and how we prevent also violence against women and children. Your federal government stands with you and your delegation stands with you to fight for those federal funds at the Department of Justice that will help fight crime in Baltimore City. We will continue the funding that we have to go against violent gun crime offenders because in targeting violent crime and in targeting the high drug and gun offenders, you've been able with your police commissioner to re reduce the homicide rate 
by 17%. You are to be congratulated for the fact that you've been able to do that. We're going to fight for more money to get the guns off the street. We're going to fight for increased funding for the federal <coughs> funds that put more cops on the beat. Last year, you won, and during the stimulus, you were awarded over $10 million to add 50 new police officers. We're going to fight for those federal funds so you have the resources to put the boots on the ground here in Baltimore to be able to do that. We also want to congratulate you on your, your continued advocacy of preventing violence against women. Violence against women, whether it's domestic violence uh, in the home or whether it's rape out on the street, is a despicable and horrendous crime. People need to feel safe in their home and safe in their streets. We're going to continue to fight for those federal funds to work with the police department and your network. You've already won those funds, but to make sure that the cops know when a situation is lethal. You have won money to be able to do those kinds of assessments when police officers uh, respond to that. Um, the, so when a cop responds to domestic violence, they don't know what the, the level of danger. Is this just a spat after a sports event where the spouse has had too many beers and is acting out? Or do they really have intent to kill and to murder? Should the police be removing the spouse? Should the police be removing the children? Through the federal government, we've developed a lethal index. And we are working with your police department to make sure that every police precinct and every police officer has access to the lethal index, knows how to use the lethal index, so that they can be protecting those women and children, primarily women and children, in those homes. We also want to do everything we can for prevention and getting these guns, particularly in, that are in the home, off the streets. One out of four police officers killed in the line of duty are killed responding to domestic violence. So we want to protect the people in the home. We want to protect the protectors who are responding to their needs. The other is this issue of rape. What a despicable and horrific crime. And it's been a national challenge to deal with the backlog in dealing with those rape kits that we have uh, collected we have new ways of collecting forensic event, uh, evidence, new ways of processing them, but they're costly. They're expensive. They cost more than $1,000 per case just to process the science. We are going to work with you to continue to lower the backlog here. Um, you already have won $1 million uh, in federal funds. We want to continue that to make sure that if a crime has occurred and we have collected the evidence that there is money to pay for the DNA assessment so that our prosecutors can have the best evidence and we can make sure that if you're guilty, you go to jail, and if you're innocent, you go free. It is through science that we'll be able to make our streets safer. So we're going to be working with Attorney General Holder to make sure that Baltimore uh, gets the resources that it needs, and we're going to make sure that there's federal money in the federal budget for you to apply for these important grants. You've got a great success story to tell. We want to keep the momentum going. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Senator. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, first of all, we had a, a very good meeting with the mayor, and the thing that came through and words that the mayor used over and over again was making sure that she used the tax dollars in an effective and efficient way. Uh, she has done that over and over again, and we're very proud to be partners with her because it makes our job a little bit easier when we know that the money is going to be spent that way. As you probably know, the, uh, I sit on, I'm a senior member of the Transportation Committee. Transportation is so important uh, to not only to our city, but our state and to our country. Uh, unfortunately, the House is, uh, basically has to toss out its bill 
and we are starting all over again. But we're, we're committed to making sure that transit and highways is not separated. Transit is very, very important to us in this city and, and to cities all over the country. And so uh, we're going to be working to try to make sure we get those dollars back to uh, our city. Uh, I was also uh, very pleased about the efforts of our mayor and Senator Mikulski and many others with regard to uh, violence against women. Uh, the mayor had a difficult situation when she faced the whole issue of rape in our city, um, but she took it on head on, did not try to hide the facts. She put it all out there and has addressed it very effectively and efficiently. And uh, the efforts on the part of Senator Mikulski and the others in our delegation, but particularly led by Senator Mikulski, to help women who are going through difficulties uh, with their partners or spouse, whatever, um, has, uh, I think is going to set the, an example for the entire country. And so we're going to continue to work very closely with the mayor in addressing those issues. Finally, let me, just, let me say this, that we all understand, and, and Senator Mikulski alluded to this, these are difficult times. We don't, uh, we're not, we, we, we deal with this every day. We realize that um, the federal government has to cut back. As a matter of fact, we all agree with that. But we also said that it must, the cuts that we make must be done with the skill of the most skillful heart surgeon doing the most difficult operation. And we are committed to that, but at the same time, we also committed to making sure uh, that cities like Baltimore are able to survive through these, these difficulties. We will get through this as a country. We will get through it. The question is not whether we'll get through the storm. The question is, uh, will we uh, have the same, will we still be intact, will we still uh, have uh, all the things that we need during that storm so that when the storm is over, we're still doing fine. Uh, I also want to applaud the, the mayor on her efforts with regard to crime. Uh, you know, when you have the lowest homicide rate since 1977, particularly in difficult economic times, that says a lot. But that's why the job situation is so important. That's why the infrastructure bank is so important. We've got to put people uh, to work um, because I think it's, it, you know, as I live in the inner city and I know that, you know, if you don't have people with jobs, it's kind of hard for them to take care of their families. And if they can't take care of their families, that leads to all uh, uh, kinds of other problems. Um, and so uh, we're going to push hard for every training dollar we can get, push hard for every infrastructure job dollar we can get because we realize how important all of this is. The mayor has had a um, commitment uh, and announced in her state of the state that she wanted 10,000 new families to come to Baltimore. We'll, we certainly applaud that. But we also applaud her efforts to make sure that the ones who are here stay here. And I know her efforts have been, uh, she's done a great job in trying to make sure that happens through all sorts of methods. And we are committed to making sure that happens too. Uh, we believe in this city. We want to continue to make Baltimore a livable community as it's been and bring, bring life and vibrancy even more so to a city that's already great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. I'll be very brief because Senator Mikulski and Congressman Cummings have touched on the main points. I want to thank the mayor for, for giving us this opportunity to hear her priorities articulated. I want to echo what Elijah Cummings just said. We're very proud to represent a Baltimore city. Uh, with Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Baltimore has a great present and it has a great future. And I just echo two things. One is I don't think whether you're in flush times or in tough times as we are now, there's any more important partnership than the one between the federal government and the cities across this country. And the mayor understands that and she set out her goals and her priorities in a very clear and concise way so that we can work with her as Team Maryland to make sure uh, that those opportunities uh, are pursued. The second thing is, again, to echo a theme here. I think this narrative of trying to bring 10,000 new families to Baltimore over the next 10 years is a very powerful, overarching narrative and framework that can guide the city. And everything that we're trying to do, focusing on infrastructure that can drive the engine of this city and create jobs, making sure that crime continues to go down, and what a wonderful job the mayor has done in that respect, investing in workforce opportunities, 
making sure we have good schools, all of those are contributing factors that are going to make families decide that Baltimore City is where they want to live and work and where they want their children to live and work. And so we can grab onto this narrative of trying to bring 10,000 new families uh, to Baltimore over the next 10 years. It's something we're excited to work with the mayor on. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. We're going to open up. We have a, a little bit of time for questions. We did go over in our, our session, so we don't have a lot of time, but we do have time for a few questions. Senator, um, I know that there was talk here about the um, House transportation bill, but I'm curious where things stand with the Senate side on that. And um, is there anything in there that um, people in Maryland or Baltimore should specifically be looking out for um, policies, money? Um, I know it's not under committee, but I'm just curious if you heard anything on what's going on. Well, first of all, the House bill, uh, excuse me, the Senate bill is on the Senate floor. There are 300 pending amendments, of which 290 are irrelevant um, to uh, the funding. They're more about politics uh, than about infrastructure. Uh, the Highway Transportation Bill will be important uh, to Baltimore uh, and to Governor O'Malley because, number one, it enhances our formula funds so that the mayor would know what it's going to count on. And then it will provide the basic, essentially, core money uh, for both um, the money for overall highway funds um, and also for mass transit and for bus service. Uh, the bus service and mass transit is important not only for big projects like the Red Line, but I think the mayor would be the first to say issues like the circulator Good public transportation, good in-city bus service is enhancing to our economic uh, development. So overall, this will be very important. It has specific projects uh, in it, and uh, we can tell you those details. Um, but it comes down to this. Do you want to grow America and its economy, or do you want to grow political parties? If you want to grow America, you want to back the highway bill, and you want to back an infrastructure uh, bank because that will be one of the things that will lead our country out of our unemployment crisis. It will put people to work in construction, in engineering, and in design. Uh, and um, we know in Baltimore it would be absolutely uh, crucial uh, to be able to do that. And our physical infrastructure uh, is, um, you know, people want to know, are the jobs here, are the streets safe, are the schools good? And we're making progress in all this here area. And um, is, does it have an affordable tax rate? Many of the things that our mayor faces are unfunded federal mandates. Mandates that were given to her by the federal government and infrastructure, uh, like in water and sewer. These are important, and we need to make sure that by funding an infrastructure bank, she gets the chance to build her schools, build the physical infrastructure, build Baltimore, and the whole region uh, get stronger. That's why this delegation is absolutely committed to not only individual programs, but to an infrastructure bank where we can make it not only highways and byways, but uh, that we are on the road to economic recovery. Congressman Cummings. Uh, question. Um, along these lines, uh, the um, subject of the file tax, mm -hmm. Can I talk to you about that? I want to get the federal delegation's questions. I'll talk to you as soon as I'm okay, done sure, with this. No I'll come talk no about this. Congressman Cummings, can you um, speak to the uh, National Guardsman who was killed this morning? Yeah. Please. Um, I think uh, whenever we have um, the death of uh, anybody, any of our uh, armed service folks, it it's, uh, brings a tremendous amount of pain. And we all, uh, certainly we are more very um, saddened by it. Um, it just reemphasizes something that we, in our delegation, and, and most members of Congress, I think, you know, when you, we send our folks off and they, to do, uh, do their jobs, um, they take a tremendous risk, and it's just real and very sad. And so, um, uh, again, our, our, uh, our sympathy goes out to their family. Do you have time for one more question for the delegation? Since we're, um, since we're talking about federal issues, if no one else has anything, I, I just thought I would ask you guys about the secure communities uh, issue. And the city made a big effort to reach out to the Hispanic community when 
there was some violence a couple years ago. I'm wondering if you think that this, I know you're opposed to this, I saw your letter, but if you think this rises to the level where the city should make an additional outreach and what kind of other plans are, and then if anybody from the delegation wants to weigh in on that. We, can, we continue to, to make outreach. I want to make it clear that Baltimore is a welcoming place for uh, immigrants. I mean, that's how our city grew, and we're not going to turn away from our roots, and that's how I think we will continue to thrive uh, as a city. So, you know, we're certainly doing the outreach, getting the uh, talking to the um, you know, immigrant community about their concerns and how we can uh, do everything we can to make sure that uh, they know that, uh, you know, Baltimore is a place for, uh, you know, new Americans. <laughs>